Uh, so I tell people I'm not full-blooded Jewish or Jew. Jew I'm, I'm just Jew-ish. Ish, exactly. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. And how do you maintain such a strong sense of value and, and God and faith living in the lines yeah. that you're living in? No problem. No problem. That's everything. My phone, my computer wasn't working for. I'm glad we. Fi I'm glad we finally got this done. Thank you so much. I'm sorry it's taking so flipping long, man. We're uh, just grinding away over here. I, I got two films going to Toronto International Film Festival, so we've been like crazy trying to get all of our post production done because we literally had to rush everything because we got accepted. Uh, no, that's all good so, yeah. stuff, and, and we're so happy that you that you came grinding on. Away. Thanks, uh, on a personal patient. note, you know. You, you're one of my uh, one of my personal favorites from growing up. I kind of feel like I grew up with you a little bit because from home improvements and all the good, all your good stuff. And I'm glad that not only are you are you known for like a lot of wholesome television, but uh, I'm glad in your personal life also that you're really maintaining that message and everything like that. So hey, you know, great job for you. That means a lot, man. It's. Uh... Yeah, it's funny. You you know, everybody can have kind of great careers and whatnot, but I think kind of when you, you know, it's trying to keep that balance of uh, family and work and at the same token, trying to stay kind of on that positive side of things. Not, uh, you know, the world is such a crazy place. It's uh, it's kind of sometimes tough to try to stay balanced in that uh, in that world. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Well, how, let me let me ask you, how do you stay balanced? Like, you know, tell me, you know, tell tell our viewers a little bit about your personal background. Yeah. Uh, you know, your family life. Just just a little bit about Zachary Bryan, the person. Yeah. Um. Awesome. I love this question. Um. Well, I grew. I'm, <laughs> I'm originally from uh, Colorado. My my uh, dad's side of the family comes from a farming background, so we do uh, we grow corn, wheat, and Milo. Milo's used to to feed cattle and and other animals um so i kind of come from like the you know that salt of the earth uh kind of background you know it's, it's it's a lot of hard work for really not a lot of reward uh i'm actually changing that with a little technology i'm a part of called producer's token that i'm sure we'll get into here shortly but um but yeah so right. I, I come from uh, i kind of come from like uh, middle america background you know uh I guess if you want to paint that in a negative term, maybe the Trump supporters. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, not necessarily. It's beautiful. But, it's beautiful. But, you know, beautiful. I, just, I, I, love I think it. I was just raised, you know, with kind of fundamental morals and values and, um, and kind of how you treat people is kind of, you know, it's karma and how you treat, you want to treat people as you would want to be treated. Um, you know, and then, and then kind of, you know, I, I, was on home improvement as a child actor. So I was kind of like brought into this world of, uh, of Hollywood, which has, a lot of ups and downs. I mean, I, I've learned so much on like a business aspect and 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 um, and learning about negotiations and dealings, but also kind of there's a lot of this kind of negativity that comes with that, where everybody's out for themselves. Everybody, you know, it's it's what what do I, you know, a lot of shark infested waters, I guess you would say. <laughs> so uh, so it's it's sure. been tough trying to, you know, you've always just want to kind of keep that balance of of, of of teaching my kids right from wrong. But also knowing when you do need to get a little selfish and make sure that you're taken care of, uh, uh, but also then thinking about giving back. And, uh, and I, I spend a lot of um, at least 20 percent of what I earn. I put back into either our JCC or other charitable like kind of organizations awesome. that I'm a part of. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, Good I, for you. I try to, you know, I've been blessed and um, and uh, and I try to, you know, I try to give back uh, when I can, obviously, with without obviously de being detrimental to my own family. So, <laughs> of course, of course, yeah. no, that, that what an important thing to remember. I mean, like, you know, twenty percent. That twenty percent. That's a, that's a that's a real tithe. You know, you're you're a real uh, you're like a you're like what you would call a super Jew in, in, uh, in Jewish, yes. <laughs> in Jewish mentality. Well, I learned that's from great. my father-in-law, which he does the same thing. He uh, He's a very successful man, kind of, he's in the healthcare space. With, and he was always the one that kind of taught me, you know, he, 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 he said as, as I, the more successful, I become more successful, the more I, the more successful I'm at giving. Um, and he, he said it's it. just this energy that kind of comes along with it. You're, you're clear headed, you're, you feel good about business dealings. It's, it's kind of this whole reciprocal kind of energy that, that comes along with giving back. So. You're, that's that is a beautiful, beautiful thing, and I and I give you a hundred blessings that you should double and redouble all your income so that you can double and redouble all your giving as Thanks, well. Thanks, man. That's a great thing to hear. Great thing to hear. Thanks for that. So you you're talking about um, 
you know, you give back to your faith community, you give back to, so you said you, to the JCC, what, what's your family's involvement in your, in faith community, in, in faith in the home? What, how, how do you, how do you live your life in that, in that particular way? Like what is, what is faith and, uh, you know, in that type of thing mean to you? Practically? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, I married, so I was raised Catholic. Uh, I went to a Catholic high school. Uh, growing up, in, uh, okay. growing up on the farm, there's not very, you know, not very many uh, the many Jewish people out in the rural uh, communities. Uh, but sure. I, I ended up meeting a Jewish uh, woman, my wife Carly, who mm -hmm. kind of introduced me to Judaism. Um, her family is okay. very, uh, very strong in the community. Uh, with that, I, I ended up doing an introduction to Judaism class and. Uh, I haven't done the full cool. conversion yet, and it's not because I'm a bad Jew. <laughs> <I'm> actually, <laughs> so we have you have to go through. Eight. Listen, the circumcision. That I can I can no, understand. No, the circumcision is a I'm tough. Good uh, there. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> good, good. I, I thank God. I think I think I think they were, my parents were convinced that it was for cleanliness <laughs> reasons. So that was right, 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 um, right. But uh, but what? So but and the reason being is because you have to do an 18 week and you can't miss a week. And every time I'm right. here, I got to for you that's this impossible. That. So I just haven't been able to string along like 18 consecutive weeks. Uh, so <laughs> right. I tell people I'm not full blooded Jewish or Jew. Jew I'm I'm just Jewish. <laughs> Ish, exactly. Perfect. But, Perfect. Uh, Good enough for me. Whoa. So my, you know, um, obviously, my awesome. you know my wife is, and I knew that that was over. coming. That my children were going to be Jewish, so we started uh, becoming very. Uh, big in, in kind of the JCC community. My father was a kind of a big part of it being built and donated a lot of money with the Mirage family. It's the Mirage JCC. Um, and, uh, and so that was kind of my introduction into it. Uh, you know, okay. then obviously, as you know, with that kind of you spread into the Jewish Federation and then the a APAC, my father-in-law is a federal member of APAC. So, so I've kind of had of this very, uh, very cool experience uh, kind of being led okay. directly to the to the to the big the big guys of the of the jewish people uh i got to go to That's israel awesome. and we shot a documentary we were for we sure used the, yeah it for was sure. pretty cool so we were it was really about politics but how we oh, kind of painted it was we were trying to find the best shawarma and hummus and we would use that as kind of a segue into you know talking about the conflict because <laughs> we were going you know we I went into uh, Gaza we went into the West Bank we went pretty much everywhere trying to find the best hummus uh, but then we were able to talk about you know the, the, sure. oh, the issue at hand and all the land uh, <laughs> dilemmas and, and we kind of came away with some really in, in, with some really interesting stuff um, but yeah so I got to go to Israel and and. I just, I think, I think with looking at the world and what's happening in the world right now, I just feel that like, you know, everybody talks about how it's getting worse and, you know, this divide is happening more and more and it's, and, and I just correlate it directly to we've lost our sense of, you know, faith, but, but I don't say faith in a Jesus way or a, or a Judaism way or a, We've just lost this sense in a higher being. We've lost this sense in, of right and wrong. We've, you know, the more that sure. we've pushed God away, the worse things have gotten. And, and that's that's my opinion. I'm sure that you would have a million people on the left or anti-religious people that would say I'm crazy and I'm a lunatic. But this is just something that I think or I see clear as day. Um, and it, and and for me, it's 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 kind of frustrating because I'm like. You know, that's just how I kind of can break it all down, where to where it just really makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I I agree. I mean, there, there's definitely a starvation or a thirst for you know God, purpose, spirituality, meaning in our lives that so much of our country has unfortunately, um, you know, mm -hmm. left to the wayside, either purposefully or really not purposely, but. It just kind of happened over time. You know, you're kind of in the lion's den. The, that type of talk that you were just talking about, you know, God and values and being in the heart of Hollywood, you know, how do you maintain, you personally, how do you maintain such a strong sense of value and, and God and faith living in the lion's yeah. den that you're living in? 
Yeah. Uh, well, I'm, I think. Well, I think I was. I was. I was raised really. Really. I think my parents raised me right. I mean, I, I'm. I don't put. I'm not an in-your-face guy. But I'm also the guy that if you're going to ask me, I'm going to tell you straight up, and I'm going to be I'm going to be direct with you, and I'm going to be right in your eyes, and it's going to probably even make you a little uncomfortable. <laughs> but I'm okay with uncomfortable because, you know, I think people know that not only do I talk about it, I live it. Um, yeah. I think also um, I'm on the you know now I'm on the producing financing side, and they need okay. money more now than ever. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so I think that probably helps. But, I, you know, but at the same token, you know, I'm not I'm not a, I'm not, you know, an extremist by any means. There's sure. a lot a lot of social issues that I actually agree with. I mean, you know, one thing about uh, about being in a Jewish community that's always fascinated me was the fact that they they tend to lean left. And it always cut kind of, And the reason it fascinated me because I was like, you know, it seems, you know, the you know, between uh, Israel and Jerusalem and. You know, so much of this would be to me a conservative issue. Sure. Um, but then you realize how important a lot of social issues are to, to to Jewish people, and I'm sure a lot of that is the history of what they've been through. So learning about that, it, I mean, I almost even look at myself more as like a libertarian in the sense of I'm very, you know, a lot of social issues. I am, you know, I am very, I am left. But when it comes to money values right wrong morals i feel like i'm i'm very conservative so i'm kind of like this meld of the two and i think i also um i think i also they see that side of me too in hollywood so they're not sure. like okay he's not just like this crazy jesus guy you know like <laughs> um and, but i but i'm also trying to do pro like like feel if you look at films i'm doing uh i'm trying to do films that are topical Okay. Are relevant are relevant in today's world. Sure. But uh, but also are edgy. I mean, uh, the kindergarten teacher coming out with Maggie Gyllenhaal is about a kindergarten teacher that is trying to save this kid is just a, a an artist, a savant, uh, a poet, and he has this really his father is uh, is a club owner. The mother is kind of this traveling stripper and. She basically kidnaps him to save his innocence and keep him in the arts because they're trying to move him out of the art. But obviously, you can't just kidnap somebody's kid and, sure. and get away sure. with it. Uh, skin. We just found out actually we're opening night at uh, TIFF, which we're really excited about. But that's all about racial relations in the country. Okay. Um, and it's a true story about a guy that got out of uh, that was trying to get out of the KKK, and he had the help of an African American FBI informant. Uh, where they put him into the witness protection program that's financed by an anonymous Holocaust survivor. Oh, wow. So that's a really cool bra. And actually, I'm not, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that we're going to be opening night at TIFF yet until they announce it, just so you know, for this. We'll uh, um, keep it on the low down. But, um, but so I'm trying to do projects that are really meaningful, heart, you know, but ha have, you know, are dealing with maybe negative issues, but have a positive outcome. Um, so yeah, so I, I think I'm getting the respect because of that those kind of things. Um, I'm not the you know the the Woods was it James Woods that's just you know hates. I don't hate anybody. Sure. Um, what I what but what what frustrates me in a sense is I feel like I can sit there and listen to somebody from the left, try right. to understand where they're coming from, uh, maybe disagree on some policies with uh, with them or or, or direction, but. I feel like a lot of times when I have a conversation with them, with with me, they just they just they don't they they think I'm evil out of the get go. So I don't even sure. have a shot from, sure, from, sure. from You're the beginning. Racist and bigot homophobe. That's, that's my frustration. Right, you are a racist bigot homophobe, um, but uh, yeah, apparently, <laughs> okay, obviously, know. obviously. Um, and I always it's so funny. I, I got I was I forgot what I said, but I posted something, and this this guy called me a Nazi. And, and and I I didn't even respond and I blocked him and, and whatever. But I, I I all I could all I, and I was you know I, I remember reading it and looking at my wife and my children in the back. It's like huh? And just be yeah like who like how indoctrined are you? To what gave it away? My I Jewish children? Something? Like what gave it away? My yeah. Jewish children? You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's to me it just it, it, and and that you know. It, that's the frustration I have, I think, is, is, is I feel like the left just thinks we're evil, where the right just disagrees. 
and there's kind of a, that's a big disconnect at times. Yeah, I, I see that definitely as an unfortunate thing that's really kind of brewed in our country. One thing, one thing that I always respected and I thought was kind of an interesting thing, Alan Dershowitz spoke at our Chabad um, like conference of all like the Chabad rabbis uh, a few years ago, and one thing that he said that really impacted him was something that he heard from the Lubavitcher Rebbe, like the Grand Rebbe of the Chabad movement. And gotcha. when, when they met together, um, the, you know, they, had a, they had a discussion, and uh, Alan Dershowitz said that um, what, what made such an impact on him was that even though 80 or 90% of the things that the Rebbe believed in and lived like and you know, espoused, he didn't necessarily agree with, but the only things that they discussed were the things that they agreed. And like, they just found the common ground of that human element. And, yeah. and that was the area that they concentrated and not focus on. And most Americans to, get, can get together and agree on 70%, 80% of what's good and valuable for the, like, so just mm -hmm. the, the other stuff, just, you know, let it go. Just don't talk I, about I, it or whatever. I, Vote it out of office if you don't like it. Absolutely right, man. And, you know, I don't think the media helps with that because no. the media oh. talks about the divide. And, yeah, and it's sad that For we sure. just try to focus on the 30% part, the thirty percent that we disagree rather than really focus on how do we make that 70% maybe even bigger sure. on what we do agree. You're absolutely right. Oh, my God. That's it's, really cool. That's it's a good insane. Point. And I love Dershowitz, man. He is so fun. I mean, the intellect that's, that comes from that man. Oh, my just, gosh. I can sit there and just listen to him. I, I, see, I watch him on Fox News all the time. and. I'm just, I, I, as soon as this interview is ended, I'm like, no, 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 keep that. Nah, right, right. It's just, yeah, it's oozing wisdom. It's, it's just great to, just great to listen totally. to a mind like that.